All right, so we're back in the mill with the base plate piece. And if you can see, I have it marked here and over here with layout die. Those are gonna be my lines. And this is gonna be the base. It's about approximately four by five inches long. We cut it in the bandsaw and the bandsaw leaves a really, a really ugly saw mark in it. It's pretty horrible. So I want to mill it to size. This is not an exact precision fit, but the mill will leave a much nicer end on there to dress up. So I'm just doing this in one pass. This is a little less than a 16th of an inch here. This other side is, is not quite so pretty, but I'm just going to do it in a slow single pass, take everything off using a one of these nice cutters that Dennis Nolan from Niagara sent me one of these nice end mills. Does a beautiful job and it's about as sharp as a razor. It's done a real nice job. So once again, um, we're just gonna, we've got a line milled here. Now this time we're taking probably close to a quarter of an inch off the side. Gonna use the same setup, I'm just gonna lower the feed rate down. I'm using a, a real big end mill. Man, I really love it. It's one of the only new end mills I own are the ones they sent me. Everything I have is are used end mills and uh, does an amazing job. Where I changed speed right there. I adjusted the speed just a little bit and you can see where it, no matter, it's gonna get finished anyway. All right, I've got us lined up on a first hole here and what we're doing is drilling holes into the base plate. These will match the original bolt holes in the, the steam engine. That'll come into play a little bit later. So we've got four holes. The nice thing about using a DRO and doing this in a mill is all these holes are in a perfect grid. So you can use a longitudinal travel to make sure that your holes line up in exactly the right spot. And your in and out travel to make sure that the holes that are corresponding fall in exactly the same spot. Now the thing that's nice is we just crank it in and we know that we're exactly in line with that other hole. Just like that, we have all four holes in a perfect grid. Now our little mount that we made, we're gonna drill the holes in the base. It's pretty straightforward. Uh, you can see I've already laid them out on the layout lines. I've already center punched them. The nice thing again, once again, is because they're on the same plane, we'll just use the, the travel on the mill to keep them perfectly lined up so they'll wind up being just, just spot on. This part's just flipped over, and here are our two holes that are gonna hold that mount that we made. We need to put a counter bore in there because we're gonna use this socket head cap screw and it can't hang out the bottom because it wouldn't sit flat. So we're gonna bore about a quarter inch counter bore in here with this counter bore. And all I'm gonna do is once I get here, mark my depth stop on the mill, Now, just to make sure that we did everything right. There we go. Counterboard's a little bit big, but it's what I had, and I'm gonna go out and buy one. It does suits the purpose well. All right, so here's the base plate. And we're gonna we're gonna mill a chamfer all the way around the side of this. And it's purely for nothing more than looks. So what I did is I, I've put some layout lines in here. And the layout line runs all the way around. And in the mill, I have a 45 degree V-ing end mill for doing like a V-type a v slot. I'm gonna run it over and just take off until I come to the edge of the line. And then just allow the power feed to work it all the way down. Swap the part around, same thing again. And I will do it long ways. And all we're looking for is to put a real a, a nice looking chamfer on it.
pretty nice looking edge that puts on it. So the object here is I have some layout lines. I'm not sure if the camera can pick it up, but I want to take an end mill and open up a cavity in here. And this is gonna stuff a couple of electronic components. I'm gonna open it up three eighths of an inch deep from the surface down. This end mill here is awesome at cutting on the sides, but not as good cutting on the, the face. So I'm gonna have to work it back and forth to get it in there. It does not like to have contact on 180 degrees, but what it does do is give me a really nice radius profile once we get it in there. So you're gonna see me have to work it back and forth to get it in to full depth, and then I'll come down the sides and clean it up. And it gives a real nice looking cavity in there. It's got a real nice profile in there. This will be the bottom, this will be the top. All right, so we're back over here at the mill. We've got to drill and power tap a couple of holes here. Um, we're going to have two number eight 32 screws that are going to go right here where I've got these two center punch marks. I cut what I thought was a piece of copper out of just some old stock that I had that was kind of crusty and it wound up being brass. I originally expected it to be copper, but brass works just as good. It's going to bolt right here and it's going to be a little light and that's going to be kind of pseudo be our, our light pole when the generator spins and it illuminates a light like it would in the city. That's kind of the idea here. I dressed it up a little bit with the grinder and, and drilled a couple of holes in it, but essentially a piece of brass tubing there and two number 832 cap head screws are gonna hold it down. Pretty simple operation. I've already center punched where I need them. All right, once we get these two holes drilled here, in between those two, we're gonna drill another hole. And remember that cavity we machined down in the bottom? That's to hold some wires and electronics out of sight. No exact numbers here. We got a very large area to deal with. We just need a small hole for a couple of very, very tiny wires. We'll move over to the drill press and we're, we'll power tap this with a number 832. All right, so we got the uh, trusty Alumatap. Put a little Alumatap here on each one of these holes. Nice and easy does it. An 832 tap. Get all the way to the bottom. Just reverse it. It'll run it right back out for me. Now this is so easy that I imagine I could do it with just about any of the small size taps, but I gotta be honest, getting anything smaller than a 832, maybe a 632 I would do it, but I just, I'm so fearful of breaking a tap off on a part and then having to restart the part all over again this late in the game. Just easier to tap those two holes by hand if the tap got much smaller. There we go, easy as pie. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed what you saw here today. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and like us on Facebook, please. Somewhere down below here is a link. We've got a lot more really cool stuff coming. Is that right, camera guy? Is there a link down there? Send me a comment. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Click whatever link, click something. See you soon.